started. Now that was quick. Maverick from Turkey, right? Turkey. Okay, e4. Um, well, let's play a Sicilian. e4, c5. Maybe we'll get a dragon. If allowed. If allowed. We'll see. Okay, we've got the main line so far. Yep, all the main moves. I'm attacking the E pawn. He defends, blocking the C pawn. Now, I play the classical in slow time control, but um, the uh, <clears throat> the dragon variation is always an interesting option. He's going for the um, the main line there, the Yugoslav attack. The next move is F3 to stop the knight from coming to G4. Then I can develop a knight or a bishop or castle. They're all sort of in the mix there. I'll wait a few moves before castling. But usually you have to castle. I've, I've looked at uh, different ways of playing this because I got into trouble <laughs> playing the dragon in a number of different ways. And one of the ideas I looked at was delaying castling, but that seems to cause even more trouble. So I think bishop uh, b5 was a bit unusual. It's uh, bishop c4, bishop d2, or bishop e2, or queen d2 are the normal moves here. So he's threatening knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes check with a fork. So I really have to defend. I could have defended with the queen, I guess, but um, right, defending with the uh, bishop seems reasonable, too. And now why don't I just go ahead and castle so there won't be a pin to worry about there anymore. Um, black has a really solid structure for the end game. so if white just uh, trades off, um, black usually ends up in decent shape. Ah, now there's, there's pressure building on the d-file, though. I have to be careful. There's the idea of pushing the e-pawn here and then getting at this uh, bishop. So let's um, force some exchanges here. I want to play this pawn move anyway. I'm going to play b5 if I get the chance. And, uh, yeah, my knight is defended here. Got to be careful. I, a lot of games have been lost by uh, players playing b5 when the knight was not defended. <sighs> Funny. Is it possible to play this? I mean, it's a common idea to play knight somewhere and then rook, rook c8 and then knight to c4 to force a trade of this light squared bishop. Maybe it's a little more accurate to play the knight over here to um, a4, hitting the bishop immediately. And I don't think he has any pawn sacrifice ideas. And the pawn push here is not yet working. He sort of lost a tempo by moving his bishop around. So now I can trade the bishop for a knight, but uh, I don't want to do that especially. Um, this pawn coming to d4, it sort of blocks his uh, d5, blocks his d-file, <clears throat> but um, it leaves me with a backwards e-pawn, so it's kind of uh, annoying. So um, I have to be careful though. He can move this knight with a tempo Oh, no, my knight's defended by the uh, my queen. So I think I can just play here in knight c5, knight c4 like I planned. Yeah, so knight c4 here, hitting his queen. This sort of forces an exchange. And uh, I'm going to allow him to take my bishop if he wants. And then I take with the rook, and I get this nice rook here on the c file. And I can even think of uh, sacrificing it on c3 to disrupt his pawn structure here. Maybe after queen c7. <clears throat> yeah, this is an interesting way to play. So instead of taking immediately, he starts pushing this pawn, which um, is threatening to open up the uh, threatening to open up the uh, h file. So I think I take the bishop, queen takes, and then when the pawn comes forward, I can take with the knight forcing him to sack the exchange if he wants to continue the attack. So I take queen takes. It's uh, my move. I play queen c7 maybe. He pushes the pawn. I take. He takes. The rook I take back. And then he brings his other rook over here. Hmm, and he still has to win a pawn, and then he mates me. But uh, so I have a move to take the uh, the knight. This knight, He's, he has to give up a lot of material to do that. Okay, so let's start with the exchange. 
It's very important I can't let him take on uh, g6 because that would open up this file immediately. So when the pawn comes to h5, I have to take it with the knight. And uh, let's see, he can play g4 first to prepare h5. is an idea. Let's see, if I play the move e5, kicking the knight, where is it going? It's not going to these squares. It could go back to, uh, yeah, it goes back to e2 and defends this knight. Ah, so he comes forward with his knight. Yeah, that's actually a good idea here, huh? Okay, but it's not immediately fatal. I can bring my queen forward to c5 and threaten to take his uh, knight on d4. And where is he going? If he trades, I'll take back with a pawn. It kind of messes up my pawn, but it leaves his knight hanging. And I've got this threat on um, c2. It's all about tempos, Check. you know, if he can take this guy. Ooh, ooh, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Okay, there's only one move here. <laughs> and, uh, oh no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta watch out for these things. There's only one legal move, and then the queen takes rook as checkmate. Hmm. Too bad. Not sure why he isn't playing it. <laughs> okay. Oh, check. It's not checkmate. What is it? Oh, I can inter I can interpose with the knight. That's uh, my only legal move. Checkmate. Okay. Well, that was a cute game. That shows what can go wrong in the uh, in the dragon variation of the Sicilian, <laughs> and why I don't play it so much in uh, blitz games anymore. Uh, we'll take a look at this in the postmortem, and uh, and uh, see you guys then. Bye.